Oh my god, it picked up right where we left off. Oh, that's funny. Quit. Yes. No, not that quit. Not that kind of quit. Quit to the menu quit. Oh, yep, yeah, he's not. He's not saying anything. Hold on. I just gotta... There we go. You are both content to share in the benefits of a temporary alliance. And you begin to tell each other of your exploits so far. Of the now, wait a minute. How do I start a new adventure? And encounters and the dangers overcome. Although you are slightly Is there no way to start? How do I reset? That there can only be one winner in the trial of champions. You are both content to share in the benefit oh. of a temporary alliance. Despite its name, Fang was an ordinary small town in a northern province of Chiang Mai. Here we go. Situated on the banks of a river. It made a convenient stopover for river traders and passengers throughout most of the year. Pay attention, this is going to be important. This is going to be on the barges, quiz. Rafts, and sometimes even a large sailboat could usually be found moored at Fang. But all that. What's up, Evie Beauty? Thank you for 46 months. Before the creation of the Trial of Champions. Now, once a year, the river is crowned with boats as people arrive from hundreds of miles around, hoping to witness the breaking of an ancient tradition and see a victor in the Trial of Champions. Oh, subs, please. I don't think there's subtitles. Unfortunately, sorry. It doesn't have any. Um. That's not a real On the choice. First of May, each year. Warriors and heroes come to Fang to face the test of their lives. Survival is unlikely, yet many take the risk, for the prize is great. A purse of 10,000 gold pieces and the freedom of Chiang Mai forever. But to become champion is no easy task. Some years ago, a powerful baron of Fang called Sukhumvit decided to bring attention to his town by creating the ultimate contest. With the help of the townspeople, he constructed a labyrinth deep in the hillside behind Fang, from which there was only one exit. The labyrinth was filled with all kinds of deadly tricks and traps and loathsome monsters. Sukhumvit had designed it in meticulous detail, so that anybody hoping to face its challenge would have to use their wits as well as weapon skill. But it didn't count on a when hobbit he was in a chair. satisfied that all was complete, he put his labyrinth to the test. He picked ten of his finest guards and fully armed, they marched into the labyrinth. They were never seen again. The tale of the ill-fated guards soon spread throughout the land, and it was then that Sukhumvit announced the first trial of champions. Messengers and news sheets carried his challenge 10,000 gold pieces and freedom of Chiang Mai forever to any person surviving the perils of the labyrinth of Fang. The first year, 17 brave warriors attempted the walk, as it later became known. Not one reappeared. As the years passed and the trial of champions continued, it attracted more and more challenges and spectators. Fang prospered and would prepare itself months in advance for the spectacle it hosted each May. The town would be decorated, tents erected, dining halls built, musicians, dancers, fire eaters, illusionists, and every sort of entertainer hired, and entries registered from hopeful individuals intent on making the walk. The last week of April found the people of Fang and its visitors in wild celebration. Hey! Everybody sang, danced, and laughed until the day broke on the 1st of May when the town thronged to the gates of the labyrinth to watch the first challenger of the year step forward to face the trial of champions. 
Trial of Champions. Having seen one of Circumvit's challenges nailed to a tree, you decide that this year you will attempt the walk. For the last five years, you have been attracted to it, not for the rewards, but for the simple fact that nobody has ever yet emerged victorious from the labyrinth. You intend to make this the year in which a champion is Because I crowned. guess I have a death wish. Gathering up a few belongings, you set off immediately. Two days' walk takes you west to the coast, where you enter the cursed port Black Sand. Wasting no time in that city of thieves, you buy your passage on a small boat sailing north to where the river Coke meets the sea. The and Coke from there river? you raft upriver for four days. Is it Willy Wonka? Until finally you arrive in Fang. The trial begins in three days' time. And the town is in we the most hysterical mood of excitement. And we are not afraid! You register your entry with the officials and are given a violet scarf to tie around your arm, informing everyone of your status. For three days, you enjoy Fang's greatest hospitality and are treated like a demigod. During the long merriment, you almost forget your purpose in Fang. But the evening before the trial, the magnitude of the task ahead begins to dominate your thoughts. Later, you are taken to a special guest house and are shown your room. There is a splendid four-poster bed with satin sheets to help you rest. Wait, but there is did little he say time satin sheep? I think he said satin sheep. I heard sheep. Just before dawn, a trumpet call awakens you from vivid dreams of flaming pits and giant black spiders. Minutes later, there is a knock on your door and a man's voice rings out saying, your challenge begins soon. Was... Please be ready to leave in 10 minutes. That was too real. You climb out of bed. That sucked. Walk over to the window and open the shutters. Already people are thronging the streets, moving quietly through the morning mist, spectators. No doubt on their way to the labyrinth, hoping to find good vantage points from which to watch the competitors. Walking over to a wooden table on which your trusty sword and shield lie, you pick them up and cut the air with a mighty sweep, oh. wondering which beasts your sword's sharp oh, edge may soon air. have to meet. All right. You open the door into the corridor and a small man greets you with a low bow as you emerge from your bedroom. Small man, low bow? Please follow me, he says. He turns to his left and walks quickly towards the stairs at the end of the corridor. All right. Walking through a parting in the crowds, you see Baron Sukhumbit himself standing by the entrance waiting to greet the contender. Which one is he? Trial of champions. You count five others standing proudly in line, their violet scarves displayed for all to see. There are two bare-chested barbarians dressed in furs. They stand completely motionless, legs straight and slightly apart, arms thrust forward to rest on the hilts of their long, double-headed battles. I love you, Chad! A sleek elven woman with golden hair and mm. feline green eyes is adjusting the cross belt of daggers wrapped around her leather tunic. Of the two remaining men, one is covered from head to foot in iron plate armor with a plumed helmet and a crested shield. The other is cloaked in black robes, only his dark eyes showing between the swarms of his black faced scars. Edgelord. Long knives, a wire garrote and other silent death weapons hang from his belt. The five contenders acknowledge your arrival with almost imperceptible nods of the head, and you turn to face the exultant crowd for the last time. Suddenly, a hush falls over the crowd as Baron Sukhumbit steps forward, holding six bamboo sticks. You draw one from his outstretched hand, and you read the word. Stab him in the throat with it. Fifth. Fifth. Then the trial begins. One, two, three, four, five! The knight is first. I plead the fifth! He salutes the crowd before disappearing into the tunnel and is followed half an hour later by the elf, 
Next goes a barbarian. And then the dark assassin. Next, it's your turn. Oh, 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 he moved. But before embarking on your adventure, we must first determine your own strengths and weaknesses. Right. You have in your possession a sword, yeah. a shield, nice, and a backpack for carrying provisions for the trip. Very cool. You have been preparing for your quest by training yourself in swordplay and Texas? exercising rigorously. It's going well. To see how effective your Thank you, Space Cash, for giving been, a sub to MGS2 Master Dice two. will be rolled to determine your skill, stamina, and luck scores. Okay, here we go. Or, if you wish to begin your adventure immediately, you can choose between three ready-made adventurers. No! Roll for skill, stamina, and luck. That's what I will do. First, we'll roll for your initial level of skill. This reflects your sword skill and fighting expertise. All right. And will be determined by rolling one die and adding six. Okay, one die and adding six. Got it. And it's a two. Perfect. All right. I can re-roll. That's the, the thing. I can re-roll until I get max, I guess. Or I can take it. You got to take it and move on, though. All right, here we go. Continue to stamina roll. Next. Will roll for your initial stamina, which represents your strength. There's no subtitles so the in the game, sorry, guys. The stamina score, the longer you will survive. This will be determined by rolling two dice and adding 12. Two dice, adding 12. Here we go. Double sixes. Let's go. That's the average. Okay, we'll take the average. All right, continue to luck roll. Next will roll for your initial luck, which represents how lucky an adventurer you are. Luck and magic are facts of life in the fantasy world you're about to explore. This is determined by rolling one die and adding six. Okay, something higher than a two. Six. Oh, six, it was right there. All right. Continue. You may also take a magical potion with you to aid you on your quest. Okay. Each bottle of potion contains two measures, so it can be used twice during an adventure. You can choose from a potion of skill that restores your skill points to their initial amount, a potion of strength that restores your stamina points to their initial amount, Okay. Or a potion of fortune. All right. That not only restores your luck points to their initial amount. Three. But will also increase your initial luck score by one each time it's used. This is your choice, Bree. This is your first choice. Or the first choice of the game. You want a potion of fortune, strength, or skill, Bree? Waiting for the Mrs. Scott Evans. Fortune, she says. Fortune. All right, next person to pick will be Pengzor. Pengzor, you get the next next choice, so get ready. Lastly, before you begin your quest, you are given enough provisions for 10 meals. When you eat a meal, your stamina score will increase by four points. But don't forget... Your stamina can never exceed the initial amounts you've just set. Okay. You have a long way to go, so use your provisions wisely. I will. Now it is your turn to salute the crowd. Holding your violet scarf aloft, you take one final deep breath of cool, fresh air before turning to pass between the stone <laughs> into Sukhumvit's corridors of power. Well, thank you, Death Road Techno. I am really huggable every day. And the walk through the mighty Baron's Death Trap Dungeon. He said it! He said it! Feel brave tonight? How brave? Brave enough to do battle with hideous monsters? Mm. 
brave enough to sneak around dank castles in the dark and chance being the next victim of a death trap dungeon? <laughs> the clamor of the excited spectators gradually fades behind you as you venture deep into the gloom of the cavern. Large crystals hang from the tunnel roof at 20 meter intervals radiating just enough soft light for you to see your way. As your eyes gradually become accustomed to the near darkness, you begin to see movement all around. Spiders and beetles crawling up and down the chiseled walls disappear quickly into cracks and crevices as they sense your approach. Rats and mice scurry along the floor ahead of you. Droplets of water drip into small pools with an eerie plopping sound which echoes down the tunnel. The air is cold, moist, and dank. After walking dank, slowly bro. along the tunnel for about five minutes, you arrive at a stone table standing against the wall to your left. On it, there are six boxes, one of which has your name painted on its lid. Oh, King says this. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear it. All right, here's your choice, Pengzor. Do we walk north or open the box? Open the box, Pengzor says. All right, next choice is going to Glacier Lana. Glacier Lana, you get the next choice, so get ready. The lid of the box lifts off easily. And inside you find two gold pieces and a note written on a small piece of parchment addressed to you. After placing the gold in your pocket, you read the message, which says, Dear Penthouse, well I never thought it would happen to me. At least you had the sense to stop Here and take I was advantage in death of trap the token aid given to you. Now I can advise you that you will need to find and use several items if you hope to pass triumphantly through my death trap dungeon. Signed, Sukumvit. Memorizing the advice on the note, <laughs> You tear it into tiny pieces and continue Eat north it? along oh. the tunnel. Where you come to a junction. A white arrow With painted the, on one wall of points west. Conjunction junction? On the floor, you can see wet footprints made by those who entered before you. Thank you, Booty Rugs! It's hard to be sure, but it looks as though three of them followed the direction of the arrow, while three. one decided to go east. Okay. So east is one person's footprints, and west is three per person's footprints. So where do we go, Glacial Lana? Do we head east or head west? Also, Death Trap Dungeon, a little on the nose, don't you think? West! Go west! All right, so we're going to go west, and the next person to pick will be Simon Boxa. Simon Boxa, I'm just picking random names from chat. Simon Boxa, you have the next choice. Following the three sets of wet footprints along the west passage of the tunnel, you soon arrive at a junction. All right, Simon, do we follow the third set of footprints north or continue west following the two sets of footprints? What do you say, Simon? Follow north. All right, the third set of footprints. Footprints. Yes, I said footprints. We'll follow those footprints north. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, Evie Peavy, get ready. You get the next choice. During your adventure, you'll enter into combat a number of times. And the further you go, the tougher your opponent. I just can't be. social distance from you. Combat takes place over several rounds. Your get... attack strength is based on yours and your enemy's skill scores. For each round of battle, we'll roll two dice for you and two for your opponent, adding the results to your skill scores. These are your respective attack strengths. Whoever's attack strength is the highest wins that round of combat. Okay. So if I'm... you both had the same attack strength in a round, Sorry, Dodd Funky. In some battles, you can take an opportunity to escape. Okay. But beware. If you do run away, 
your opponent will automatically score one hit on you as you flee, costing you two stamina points. So okay. be sure you have enough. Okay. Such is the price. Of cowardice? cowardice. Yeah! Such is the price of cowardice. Your I love it. Using the traditional battle system from the original Death Trap Dungeon book, at the start of each round, you'll have a short time to decide to fight Wait. or to build up your stamina by Reaching eating your provisions here. or taking a potion, if that. you have one. <laughs> After each battle round, you'll be able to test your luck. By using luck in battles, you can either score a more serious wound on your opponent or minimize the effects of a wound scored on you. Got it. If you test your luck, after you have just wounded your opponent. He, he's moving his head around too much for me to actually. If the total is the same or less than your current luck score, you will have been lucky and will take an extra two points from your opponent's stamina. But if the roll is greater, then the damage to your opponent will be halved. If your opponent has just inflicted a two stamina wound on you, a lucky roll will halve that damage but an unlucky roll will take an additional stamina point. One last thing. Testing your luck has a cost. Each time you test your luck, your luck score will be reduced by one point. Ahead. Ah, oh, shit! He moved! You hear the thud of heavy footsteps approaching. Out of the gloom steps a large, primitive caveman. Dressed in animal hide and carrying a stone club. Oh! And you, oh! He grunts coming and spits out of there. on the floor. Oh! I and then guys, raises his club and lumbers on towards you, looking anything oh. but friendly. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit! We rolled! What did we roll? I rolled an eight, your he rolled an eight. enemy is strong. But I'm better! Sure. Because the mind is a plus eight. screams in pain as your sword sinks into his leg. Good. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh. Attack. I gotta finish this, sorry. How are we doing? Nine! Ten! Tie! That's both a tie! swing for each other. And in the confusion, both miss. Uh, attack! Big money, big money, big money! Yes, tie means he I win! He the side as the caveman swings Flap. his club at you and kick out, knocking him to the floor. All right, we're gonna tag him again. How we do it? Oh, fuck me, got me Readying that time. yourself for another attack. You okay. fail to see the rock flying towards you. Your stamina is reduced as it lands hard in your stomach. Oh, I got a hard one in my, in my tum tum. Okay, keep going, keep going, keep attacking. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Son of a bitch! The cave man is pure brutish muscle. And you failed to stop him smashing his crude club into your leg. Uh, try your luck against caveman. Um, I'll explain it in a second. Let me just, hopefully I can win this battle. There we go. You run around the lumbering caveman, crashing your sword. Now, into if I arm. try my luck after a successful hit. You try your luck, and your luck is in. Is in. So I have Please to roll under my victory. luck score, which was 10, now it's nine. Every time I roll luck, is wearing it minuses wristband. one. But if I roll like under a nine with 2d6, or it was under a 10 that time. So if I roll under that, I do one more point of damage after a successful attack. Uh, and after a successful something else. Oh God, what was it? I think I lessened damage or something like that. But that's what your luck score is. Every time you roll a luck thing, you have to roll under the, under the ability and it minuses one after you succeed or fail, I think. Okay, so, who was it? Who did I pick for the next choice? Who was it? It was, uh... E oh, it was the AVPV. Wasn't it you, AVPV? Yes. Set off north again or put the leather wristband on my wrist? Which one? 
Oh, half damage. That's what it was, Chief Greenleaf. Yes, the luck will half the damage. Thank you. After taking a hit, it will half the damage. If you roll under your luck skill, after successfully hitting, it will give you uh, another point of damage or two more points of damage. I can't remember. Put the wristband on. Got it. Okay, next choice is going to uh, Blue Lord. Blue Lord, you're next. So get ready if you get the next choice. The wristband was made and cursed by a hag. It slows down your reactions and dulls your senses. Uh, reducing your skill by four points. What? You kick the tunnel wall in anger and stomp off north. After a few more steps, you see a backpack propped up against the tunnel wall. You wonder if it belongs to one of your rivals. This is you, Blue Lord. Continue north or look inside the backpack. <gasps> Simdel, what up? You chose poorly. Look inside, all right. Next choice going to uh, ground control. Ground control, you get the next choice. Oh, if I'd have known you were a pessimist, you're a Debbie Downer or a Sally sad face, I might not have given you the choice, but I said it before. I, I looked at what you said. So ground control, you get the next choice. Not this choice, the next one. There is a single gold piece lying in the bottom of the backpack. As you reach for it, you suddenly feel a light tickling movement on the back of your hand. You withdraw your hand slowly. Spider. Trying to control your mountain panic and are horrified to see a black widow spider. God damn Before it. you can shake it off, it sinks its venomous fangs <coughs> deep into your what wrist. What the fuck? Costing you a huge six stamina points. Jeez. Jesus. Only your incredible strength could allow you to withstand the powerful venom. But you are weakened. You and are also weakened. lose one skill point. Your God hand trembles as you pocket the gold piece, cursing the person who dropped the backpack as you set off north again. We're gonna, no, we're good. We'll make it, we'll make it. You arrive at a junction Funky. in the tunnel. Thank you for 63 months. A new branch leads west, but the wet footprints you have been following continue north. You decide to keep following the footprints. I do? You uh, okay. soon come I guess I to do. another junction in the tunnel. One branch leads east, but the wet footprints you have been following continue north. Oh, here we go. And you decide to oh. follow their trail. The passage opens out into a wide cabin, which is darker, but much drier. Why are you making the choices for me? Ahead, you see the footprints gradually fade, then disappear. There is a large idol in the center of the cabin that must be six meters high. All right, here we go. In its head, a six meters. Arms, each as big as your fist. On either side of the idol stands two be like giant stuff. At least five feet. Like creatures. Okay, this is for you, ground control. Do I walk through the cave to the tunnel on the opposite wall, or walk through the cave to the tunnel in the opposite wall, or climb the idol and take the jewels? Where are you at, ground control? This is your choice. There it is. Climb the idol while singing. Okay. Should I sing? <laughs> you know what? I want to sing. Hold on. Hold on. I know what song I want to sing. Uh... There we go. This is the song I want to sing. Here we go. I'm going to climb the... Find the idol to take the jewels. All right. <laughs> the idol is very smooth and will be difficult to climb. Some rope would have been ideal for this task, but alas, you don't have any. So slowly <laughs> and carefully, you, don't have any. you begin to climb the you idol. 
fucking idiot. You're you try to climb to the idol, you idiot. Large ear when suddenly your foot slips. We'll need to check how lucky you are. Oh. We'll roll two dice. Oh, luck roll. I gotta get and under a nine. If the number rolled is equal to or less than your current luck score, okay. you have been lucky. Okay. But if the number rolled is higher than your current luck score, you have been unlucky. Uh, get, there you go, under nine. There you go, perfect. You just managed to grab the idol's earlobe and regain your footing. You scramble over its face and sit down on the bridge of its nose. You draw your sword and consider which jeweled eye to prize out first. Oh shit, I didn't, uh, let's see, uh, who's in the chat right now? Uh, Shobel, Shobel94, how about give me, uh, pr uh, the right eye or the left eye, Shobel? That's on you. I promise to come again. Oh, here we go. Wait. <laughs> There we go. Okay, now I got I got the fail horn on the on the on the soundboard again. Okay, uh, Shobel, what did you say? Did you say right or left, Shobel? You saying it? Did you say yet? You didn't say yet. Right. Okay, the right eye. Here we go. Right eye. You try to force the point of your sword under the emerald eye. Much to your surprise, it shatters on contact, releasing a jet of poisonous gas straight into your face. <laughs> the gas knocks you out and you fall backwards, this fucking blows. bouncing down the idol to land on the stone floor. Uh, medicated, you're next. Your adventure ends here. You're still next. It just ends here. But we can start again. Okay, because it, it automatically saves. Okay. So... Play. There is a large idol in the center of the cabin that must be. Oh, this is the choice. High. Okay. There we go. Okay. This is your choice, Medicated. Uh, walk through the cave to the tunnel of the opposite wall or try to climb the idol again. Because we can do it again if you want. I got the song still ready to go. Medicated, are you listening? Where are you, Medicated? Tell me what to do. I need you. Walk through the cave, you fool. Okay, sounds good. Let's walk through the cave. Anonymous gifting us up to Robotron. Tunnel. You come to a closed door on your left. Putting your ear to the door, you listen intently but hear nothing. King says this, you're next. Oh, this is you. King says this. This is you. Keep walking north or open the door. Open the door. All right, open the door. Get on the floor. Everybody walks the dinosaur. Uh, Anonymous, thank you for gifting your sub to Robotron, who's your brand new sub. Hail Berserker. Also, Evil Sarian, thank you for eight months. All right, here we go. Open the door, and the next is going to uh, Sarah Tryptamine. Sarah Tryptamine, you get the next choice. You enter a room which is small and completely empty. As soon as you are inside, the door slams shut behind you. Suddenly a voice booms out of nowhere, shouting, Welcome to Death Trap Dungeon. Thank you. The ingenious killer labyrinth of my master. Adventurer, I trust you will pay your respects to my master by shouting out his name. Oh shit! Here you go. This is on you. If you remember, come on, Sarah Tryptamine. Shout, Succumbit is a worm. Shout, Hail Succumbit. Oh, it's not, you don't have to remember. We have the name right anyway. Hail or he's a worm. What do you say? You don't have to remember anything. Shout, Hail Succumbit. All right, Sarah Tryptamine. Hail! You take a deep breath. Depo Darren, you're next. And shout, Hail Succumbit. Sick of it. Once again, the mysterious voice calls out. Only this time, its tone is full of contempt and derision. Whoopsie doodles. So, 
We have a snivelling weed in our midst, do we? Sneers the voice. My master has a special gift for you, loathsome creep. Creep! Suddenly water starts pouring into the room he through a hole a in the ceiling. It soon rises above your ankles, and there is no apparent way of escape. You wade back to the door. It is firmly locked, but in desperation you try ramming it with your shoulder. Oh, my shoulder. We'll see how skillful you really are. Oh, uh, not very. Remember, I have to roll a under roll a three. Two or less than your skill score oh, God. means you have been skillful. Terrible. But a roll higher than your skill could end bad. Could end badly. One! Oh. You are not strong enough to force open the heavy door. The water is now waist high and you are exhausted from your efforts. The water level rises quickly and you find yourself floating ever upwards until your face is pressed against the ceiling. Oh. You are soon completely immersed oh, 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 oh. and unable to hold your breath any longer. Your adventure ends here. God damn it! All right. Devo Darren, you get the next choice. Not much farther down the tunnel, you come to a closed door on your left. All right. Putting your ear to the door. This is the same choice we had before, but you can make it. You can make the same or a different choice. It doesn't matter to me. We can open the door or keep walking north. That's we opened the door last time and we shouted something. What do you want to do? Oh, uh, keep walking. All right, keep walking. Walk hard. The tunnel twists and turns. All right, ectoplasma, you're next. North. Ahead, you see a thin shaft of blue light streaming down from the ceiling to the floor. It sparkles and shimmers, and you can see images of laughing faces in the light. <laughs> what do we do? Ectoplasm, walk around the light or walk through it? Walk through the light! All right. As soon as your head goes under the blue light, Nardab, you hear the sound of next. muffled voices. The faces are no longer laughing, Aww. but have changed their expressions to one of despair and anguish. Oh, a young girl's Pepe. sad face hovers in front of you. Pepe's in as she begins to whisper a poem. Transfixed, you listen intently, believing that she has a special message for you as she recites, when corridor doth water meet, do not make a quick retreat. Take a breath and jump deep in, if your trial you hope to win. Okay. Memorizing the spirit girl's poem, you step through the shaft of light and quickly head on north. You come right. to an arched doorway set in the right-hand wall of the tunnel. The heavy stone door is closed, but there is an iron latch and a round handle. All right, Nardap. Continue along the tunnel or try the door. Door. All right, here's, here's what I love about this, doing this with Twitch chat is, you'll do the obvious like adventurer choices right off the bat. And then start, people will start like peppering in like, Let's play it a little safer. Like it, it eventually it's 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 an ebb and a flow. It's like, let's adventure. I want to see more of this dungeon. Now let's get risky again. Now I want to keep going. All right. Uh, next is uh, let's see, Lord Azrael seventy eight. You got the next choice. Lifting the latch and pushing the heavy stone door open, you find yourself in a large cabin. The light is dim and murky. But as your eyes begin to adjust, you see that the walls are covered in green algae and running with moisture. The floor is strewn with straw. The atmosphere is warm, damp, and fetid. And a soft humming sound fills the air. You step gingerly through the straw towards a corner of the cabin where there appears to be a shallow pit 
Peering warily into the pit, you are disgusted to see a mass of pale, writhing worms. Delicious Some as with much butter. as half a meter long. Nauseated, you are about half to turn away like when you big. notice that their undulating bodies are swarming around a dagger. Its point held fast in a crack in the pit floor. The hilt is cased in black leather, studded with opals, and the blade is fashioned from a strange reddish-black burnished metal you have never seen before. You long to touch the dagger, but this would mean plunging your hand in among the writhing worms. Is there a mute Zeke button so I can hear the dude when I'm getting into the storyline? You know, Dilanium, that's actually kind of fair, especially when there's no subtitles. I should, like, shut up a little bit more since this game does not have subtitles. Um, I think I can make it... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. One second here. I'm going to try the to close caption him as he's talking. I hope it works. So turn on your closed captioning. You'll get mine and his at the same time, unfortunately. So I'll have to like be aware of that and shut up while he's talking. But you might be able to get his subtitles as well. Uh, the closed captioning system is pretty good. Uh, it's not perfect, obviously, but it's pretty good. Oh shit, Azrael, what'd you say, Azrael? Reach for the dagger. Okay, we're reaching for the dagger. Here we go. Next choice is going to Saito. Taking a deep breath, you lean over the pit and plunge your forearm into the mass of wriggling worms. They are cold and clammy and feel extremely nasty, but at least they are harmless and you are able to seize the dagger by the hilt. You give it a hard tug and it comes away from the crack in which the tip was embedded. Admiring its beauty and wondering whether it might once have belonged to some luckless contestant, you put the opal studded dagger firmly in your belt and leave the cabin. As you make your way back to the doorway, the buzzing sound increases in intensity, and you look around desperately to discover where it's coming from. Glancing up in the nick of time, you see a huge and grotesque black shape of a giant fly emerging from a recess high up in the cavern wall. As it gets closer, you realize that it's at least one and a half meters long. Its opaque wings vibrate, making the sickening buzzing noise you can hear. And its six black, hairy legs are poised to grasp your body. Below, its multifaceted eyes is a long, shiny black proboscis, which darts in and out venomously. You have stolen the giant fly's treasure from her brood of maggots, and you must face the consequences. It's time to test your luck again. Remember, a roll equal to or less than your luck score means you've been lucky, but a roll higher than your luck could end bad. Under a nine. Just gotta get under a nine! What do you do? Oh my god! The giant fly dives down and seizes you with four of its legs. It climbs quickly back to the roof of the cabin, 
and you find yourself dangling helplessly in its grasp, then, to your horror, it suddenly releases its grip and you fall 10 meters to the floor, no! landing heavily. Fuck! We'll roll one die here and deduct the number from your stamina score. Low, 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 low! Good, I'll take it too. The giant fly swoops down again to try to capture you, but this time you manage to evade its outstretched legs. Stepping back, you draw your sword to prepare to fight the hideous insect Shoot. as it turns to attack you again. Oh, I'm gonna eat some provisions real quick. You quickly eat some provisions, increasing your stamina by four points. There we go. God, he's got a plus four advantage on me. I am fucked. Flying just out of reach, the fly sprays its acidic saliva into your face. It burns your eyes and you scramble to wipe it off. You try your luck and your luck is in. So equal to or lesser, good, okay. Nope. Again, it grabs you with four of its legs, climbing quickly and dropping you to the floor, landing heavily. Big roll, big roll! You grab two of the giant flies oh, legs. damn it! Oh. But before you can do any damage, <laughs> it wriggles free. Oh, no! As you prepare to take on the giant fly, you find yourself next to the door you came in. Happy to leave the fly locked in the room, you take the opportunity to escape, but not before the fly hits you with a final swipe in the back, costing you two stamina points. So... The tunnel ends shortly at a junction. Looking left and right, you see a narrow passage disappearing into the dim distance. I'm not sure what... Okay, I'm not sure what this stat does. It didn't add to my skill or anything, but I have a shield and stuff. Like, it's my defense, but how is it working? I can't, I can't click on any of these things. Go east. All right, Saito, you got to go east. Um, it's not the damage. The damage is this. It's my skill plus 2d6. It added one to my defense. Because I remember when they said you have a shield and they give you two in that category, in this category. Each weapon is a plus one then. Well, what does this stat do? This stat just says how many weapons I have. I have three weapons, but it didn't add anything to my skill, which is my attack. Oh, it's the damage you do if you win a skill roll. Okay, that's that sounds about right. So if I actually hit them with it, it'll do three damage then. That might be that might be right. Look at him. Look at him just. You're worthless. You're worth. I'm judging you. <laughs> All right. So we're going east. Uh, that was Saito's choice. Uh, and then who's going to be the next one? Let's do uh, Iron Thighs. Iron Thighs, you'll get the next choice after this.
You walk down the passage and soon find yourself standing at the edge of a deep dark. Okay, so we can look at the map to pause it a little bit. So we went east. This way and went east. Okay. Dark pit. The passage continues east on the other side of the pit. You think you could probably jump over the pit, but you're not sure. There is a rope hanging down from the ceiling over the center of the pit. And, okay, here you go, Iron Thighs. Reach for the rope with your sword to enable you to swing across the pit. Jump over the pit carrying all your possessions. Throw your shield over the pit and jump after it. Iron Thighs says rope. Reach for the rope with your sword. Okay. Then, uh, let's see who's after that. Bitter fucking pill. Bitter fucking pill, you'll have the next, uh, choice. Gripping the rope firmly, you step back to take a running jump. However, in the dim light, you do not notice that someone has cut the rope almost in two, just a little way above the section you are holding. As you swing out across the pit, it suddenly breaks, and you scream with fear as you plunge headlong to the depths below. Oh, you land heavily on your Fuck. back, but luckily your backpack cushions your fall, only costing you one skill point and two stamina points. <laughs> Could have been much worse. The darkness is almost pitch black at the bottom of the pit, and you crawl along the floor, groping in front of you. Suddenly your hand touches something cold, hard, and smooth. Icky. Oh. The object is small and round, but you cannot figure out what it is. You place it in your backpack, hoping to see what it is once you are out of the pit. Don't touch it! You continue to crawl forward and soon reach the pit wall. It's too smooth to climb, and you have to cut hand and toe holds in it with your sword. This takes a long time, but finally you climb out of the pit on the east side. You immediately check out the object in your backpack and discover that you have found an orb of blood red ruby. You are absolutely delighted and head off east in high spirits, whistling softly. The tunnel makes a sudden left turn and continues north as far as you can see. All right. Sudden left turn. Goes north as far as the eye can see. Okay. You soon arrive at a closed wooden door in the left-hand wall. All right. Here's your choice. I don't remember who I gave it to. I've been saying too many names. Bitter fucking pill. That's all right. Keep going. Keep going north. Okay. Next choice is going to... Uh, Zvi. Zvifang. You get the next choice, Zweifang. Only a few meters further down the passage, you see another closed door in the left-hand wall. The letter X is scratched into its center panel. Putting your ear to the door, you listen intently, but can hear nothing. All right, there it is. Um, choose, Zweifang. Do we keep walking north or open the door? Let me check the map here. Okay, so this is what we did. Uh, one, we skipped this one, and then we went to this one. We can keep walking north, or we can go uh, open that door. Open it! Open the door, sounds good. I need 107k for Zeke. Oh, no, you don't. You don't need that. All right, uh, Smoofy. Smoofy, you got the next one. The door opens into a large room. It's a door marked with a big around, X, so... You see an alcove in the west wall. It's gonna be great. In the middle of the room, sitting in the chair, is the skeleton of an armed warrior, possibly a contestant from years gone by. The skeletal fingers of its right hand grip a crumpled parchment. All right. What do you say, Smoofy? Walk, o walk over to the alcove, take the parchment from the skeleton. Take the parchment. Okay, sounds good. 
All right, Neo, Neo Total, you got next. Touching the parchment. It's a bad idea. Has precisely the effect you had feared. The skeleton lurches forward. Yep. And rising from its chair in a series of jerky movements, raises its sword to strike you. Because this is thrilling! Lunging sideways, night. you draw your sword to defend yourself. And I breathe lightly in the background. I'm gonna eat some provisions you first. You quickly eat some provisions, increasing your stamina by four points. Um, I'm gonna drink my fortune potion. Wow. The warrior's strength is surprising. You raise your shield to defend yourself, but it smashes you painfully against the wall. Painfully. Attack! There's no way I win. There's no way I can win. You jump back as the skeleton swings its sword, but not quickly enough. And it tears into your shoulder, sapping your stamina. Eight plus two is 10. So I have to get an 11 or a 12 to hit this guy. And he has to get like a three. You raise your sword to parry the skeleton's attack, but it knocks your sword aside and lands a painful blow. Attack! Oh, man. The warrior's strength is surprising. You raise your shield to defend yourself, but it smashes you painfully against the wall. With a jerky twist of its torso, the skeleton swipes and buries his sword deep between your ribs. Ah! As you fall helpless to the floor, oh! your adventure ends <laughs> here. Okay. So I think if we die in battle, we have to like, I would think you'd have to reset. With this skill level, I don't know how we can win, man. It's rough. With a skill level of like, I had like four skill downs. So uh, we can restart when, if we lose a battle, I guess we could keep running away. But I, there was no escape for the skeleton, was there? I didn't see an escape thing on the skeleton. Like, I didn't see an option for that. Um. All right, tell you what. Tell you what, I could go either way. I could go either way. I could, I could try and tough it out. I'd be cool toughing it out. Uh, to see how far we could get, or we could reset, and I'll let you guys decide. Um, keep going. Reset. Okay. I'm putting a poll in the chat. The first choice is keep going. Second choice is reset. Starting the poll now. One minute poll. Uh, should be at the top of your chat box where you can vote on the current poll. Um... And if you want to vote and you don't see that chat box, you can type forward slash vote one for keep going, two for reset. Uh, forward slash vote with a space, one or two. And one is keep going, two is reset. Uh, Asker5, thank you for the 10 months. Mankey Games, three motherfucking years of clicking this fucking button every month. Much love, bud. Thank you, Mankey. And Duke Castry, thank you for 40 months. Appreciate you. You cunts vote as I say. What did you say, Mr. Whiskey Richard? All right, and reset by a huge margin. Okay, so we'll reset. All right, we will reset the adventure and re-roll. Despite its name. Give me a summary. Deep. I'm good. Next. I'm good. All right, here we go. 
Are we gonna roll again? We're never ever going to choose a ready-made adventure. Never. So we're gonna roll every time. Okay. Ectoplasma dropping three gifted subs. And there was much rejoicing. Yay! Thank you, Ectoplasma, gifting out subs to Mordanus5793, Chukin, and IP Gaming. Hail! Hail, Berserkers! All right. Rolling for the skill, stamina, and luck. Here we go. First. Shut up. Okay, big, 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 big. All right, three plus six is nine. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, stamina roll. 2d6. Next. Okay, that's not as good. All right, luck roll. Next. And who, who had the next choice? We'll roll for your initial luck. Who has the next choice? Who did I pick out? Which represents how lucky an adventure you are. Neo total, okay. Luck. All right. Ooh, five. That's good. Okay. So this is your choice, Neo Total. What potion do we bring? You may also take. Okay. So potion of fortune, which gives me luck points back. Potion of strength, which gives me skill points back. Or excuse me, potion of strength, which gives me, um, oh, more damage, I think. And the potion of skill gives me skill points back. Luck potion. All right, fortune. Fortune it is. Lastly, before you begin your quest, you are given that was enough total provisions choice, guys. for 10 meals. When you eat a meal, your stamina score will increase by four points. But don't forget. Thank you. Your stamina can never exceed the initial amounts you've just set. All you right. have a long way to go. Captain Elsewhere, you're up next. So use your provisions. Wisely. Wisely. All right. The clamor of the excited spectators grew. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay. So here we are. First choice of the game is, I think it's always open the box or continue walking north. What do you want to do? Uh, uh, Captain Elsewhere. Oh, strength and stamina back, not more damage. What is the strength then? Strength, or what is this, the other potion for? Open the box, okay. The lid of the box lifts off easily. I wonder if these are random Inside, or not. Inside, you find two gold pieces and okay. a note written on a small piece of parchment addressed to you. After placing the gold in your pocket, you read the message, which says, well done. Well done. At least you had the sense to stop and take advantage of the token aid given to you. Now I can advise you that you will need to find and use several items if you hope to pass triumphantly through my death trap dungeon. Okay. Signed, Sukumvit. Anitis. Memorizing the advice on the note, you tear it into tiny pieces and continue north along the tunnel. You're next. You get the next will choice, Anitis. Junction. A white arrow painted on one wall points west. White arrow west? On the floor, you can see wet footprints made by those who entered before you. It's hard to be sure, but it looks as though three of them followed the direction of the arrow, while one decided to go east. East for the wet footprints. Arrow is west. What do you want to do there, Anitis? East or west? Going east. All right. Uh, next choice will be uh, Mr. Whiskey Richard. You get the next choice. Ahead, you can see a large obstruction on the tunnel floor. Although it is too dark to make out exactly what it is, the wet eastbound footprints you have been following carry on towards the obstruction. All right. This is you, Mr. Whiskey Richard. This is where we're at in the map. Do you continue east or go back to the junction and head west? Continuing on, okay. Uh, let's see, Rogalinho, you're next. You see that the obstruction is a large brown boulder-like object. You touch it with your hand and are surprised to find that it is soft and spongy. 
This is new. Uh, Swedish meatball, thank you for 22 months. All right. Who'd I give it to? I forgot who who I gave the choice to. It was, uh, oh, Rogue Linho. What do you think, Rogue? It's spongy. Cut the shit open. Okay, let's slice it. Sounds good. Uh, let's see. Mm, Titan, Titan Odin. You get the next choice. Titan Odin. Your sword easily pierces the thin outer casing of the giant spore ball. A thick brown cloud of spores bursts out of the ball and envelops you. Some of the spores stick to your skin and start to itch terribly. You lose two stamina points ah! as great lumps come up on your face and arms ah! and your skin feels as if it is on fire. Frantically scratching your and itching hot. lumps, you step over the now deflated spore ball Pressing on east, you turn left, which heads north for as far as you can see. The footprints you are following start to peter out as the tunnel becomes gradually drier. Soon you are beyond the dripping roof and the pools on the floor. You notice the air becoming hotter and you find yourself panting even though you are walking quite slowly. In a small recess on the left-hand wall, you see a section of bamboo standing on its end. Lifting it down, you see it is filled with a clear liquid. Your throat is painfully dry, and you feel a little dizzy from the heat in the tunnel. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, look, that's me, that's me being dizzy. All right. Uh, Titan Odin. Titan. What do we do? Continue north or drink the liquid? Drink, of course. Of course we drink. Why would we do anything else? Yellow Schneeman, thank you for 27 months. Do both your cheeks touch the toilet when you wipe? No, I lean. I lean one way. Uh, next will be Duke Tastrophe. You get the next choice as long as, I mean, if we live. The water in the bamboo pipe is welcomely refreshing and adds one stamina point. It also contains a magical solution, which will enable you to be exposed to melting point temperatures without harm. Discarding the bamboo, Whoa. you start off north again, in good spirits. Hell yeah. You find yourself dripping with sweat as the temperature continues to rise. As you struggle on, the heat intensifies until it becomes so unbearable that you feel yourself begin to pass out. No. Although the temperature in the tunnel is higher than you could normally tolerate, ha! the liquid from the bamboo pipe keeps you alive. And mercifully, after a few moments, the temperature drops rapidly and soon feels almost cool again. On the left-hand <laughs> side of the tunnel... He smiles at me. Door. What a nice smile. It has a small iron plate in it which looks like it might slide open. Okay. This is on you. Uh, give me your best shot, Duke Tashfree. Continue north, slide the iron plate, or try the open door, or try to open the door. Slide that plate. Sounds good. All right, Ludicrous Limes, you're next. The small plate slides open easily and you find yourself peering into a room with a deep pit in the floor behind the door. On the opposite wall, there is a coil of rope hanging on one of two iron hooks. Oh, shit. Now's your choice. Ludicrous limes. Continue north along tumble, tunnel. Open the jo door, jump over the pit, and take the rope. What if we went Zeke chat, Zeke chat for choices? More easy to keep track of and lets you choose, explore, move on. Just a thought. If we need to uh, keep it moving, search for me. And if it gets boring, then we'll do that. But I like it like this for now. North. I'm not Indiana Jones. So you just hear like, you see the main character, like look at the rope. And you hear the. Burr, 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 
and he turns away. <laughs> he just like fucking ignores it. Continuing north. Ahead, you see that the tunnel turns sharply to the left. All right, big rig, you're next. You big rig. Corner and almost bump straight into two fierce-looking orcs, armed with morning stars and wearing leather armor. You are totally unprepared for them and struggle to ready your weapons. Okay. During hey. your adventure, hey guy. you'll enter into combat. Oh, oh, this is just the combat. Okay, we, I know how to do the, the combat. orcs roar. Okay. And as you draw your sword, one of them swings its morning star at you, which, thankfully, crashes into your shield. Nice. Bouncing off harmlessly. Nice. The tunnel is too narrow for both of them to attack you at once. So you fight them. One at a time. One at a time. That's right, baby. All right. Well, and my choices come with the battle. So these are all my choices. So I will attack the first orc. Nine plus. I got a nine plus. Slap that motherfucker! Strong, but slow. Hit him! And you're able to strike hard with your sword. Hit him again. I don't need luck on these guys. These guys are weak! They're pathetic! Your shield protects you from the orc's frenzied attack while you're able to hack at its leg. No, he got me that time. The orc runs at you. Ouch! Smashing you painfully into the wall. This is the death blow, right? Big money, big, big, no, big rolls! What are you doing to me? You both swing for each other. Oh, third, okay, tight, tight, tight. Fusion. Okay, both we're fine, we're fine. I got four higher than him. Okay, try it again. Big rolls. Can we not? Oh, I think that's you a win. You raise your sword to parry the attack. Yep, that's a win. And are able to kick the orc hard in the stomach. Boot! Big boot! The first orc slumps lifeless to the floor. So you turn your attention to the other. Yeah. Get him! That's a win. The orc is strong, but slow and you're able to strike hard with your sword. Oh, try my luck. This means that if I get roll under an 11, that's an automatic another hit. You try your luck. Yeah, your, your luck, luck is in. Inside one of the orc's pockets, you find one gold piece Woo! and a hollow wooden tube. You is put your findings in your backpack. Is it a flute? And set off. West. As you walk along, droplets of water again start falling from the tunnel ceiling. Heading west, you see wet footprints made by the same boots that you followed earlier. They lead to a closed iron door in the right hand wall of the tunnel, but do not seem to go any further. Mm. Okay, I don't remember who I chose, but. This is where we are. We can go this way, north, or we can continue west, I think is what it says. Yep. Open the iron door or keep going west. Uh, who did I pick for that one? No, I picked somebody. Uh, Big Rig, there it is. I picked Big Rig. Uh, I love doors. Open it up. Okay, so Big Rig has chosen to open the door. And next choice will go to MMO. MMO, you got the next choice. Open the door. The door opens into a large chamber where you are shocked to see one of your rivals who has obviously met a sudden gory death. It is one of the barbarians and he is impaled on several long iron spikes that are fixed to a frame, which is coming up next on Death Trap Dungeon's funniest home videos. This barbarian steps on a trap and it just whaps him right in the body. <laughs> sprung out of the floor. A lot of debris litters the floor, concealing a hidden tripwire 
which he must have stepped on, releasing the spiked frame. In the far wall is an alcove in which you can see a silver goblet standing on a small wooden table. All right, MMO, close the door and continue west. Walk towards the alcove. Walk over to search the barbarian. I'm usually the guy that sits on all the spare car batteries for Oregon Trail, okay. MMO, what do you say? What do you say? Alcove, all right, walk towards the alcove. Um, and then next up will be Papa Sean's Bananas. Bananas, you're up next. You walk slowly over to the alcove, carefully checking the floor for any more hidden traps. You see that the goblet contains a sparkling red liquid. Okay, Papa Shantz. Leave the chamber to continue west. Leave the goblet and walk back to search the barbarian. Drink the red liquid. Hmm. Drink it. Papa Sean says drink it. All right. Uh, City of Doors, you're up next. City of Doors, you get the next choice. Drinking it. As you lift the goblet, it releases a sprung catch and a dart shoots out of the wooden table leg. Yep. This will be a test of your luck. Oh, good. Okay. Well, roll two dice. You got to roll and under if a the 10. Number rolled is equal or 10 or under. Or less than your current luck score. You have been lucky. But if the row is higher than your luck score, then your luck isn't in. Isn't in. All right, 10 or lower. We're good. We're good. Your reflexes are sharp, and you quickly jump aside. The dart whistles past, only just missing you, and thuds into the opposite wall. You see the goblet lying on the floor and the red liquid running away in rivulets over the gray stone. At least the goblet may be of use. Hey, we keep so the you goblet! Put it in your backpack. Ah! Nice! All right, City of Doors, what do we do? Leave the chamber, continue west, or walk back to search the barbarian? Search! All right, you got it. We'll, we'll search him. Uh, next up will be, let's go with Quigs. Quigs 13, you'll have the next choice. The pouch on the barbarian's belt is empty, apart from some strange looking dried meat wrapped in a cloth. Oh, Quigs, what do we do? Leave the chamber, head west, eat the dried meat. Of course we're going to eat it. It's an obvious choice. All right, then Guomi. You'll get the next one, Guomi. The meat contains herbs, which increase your strength. Oh! Adding three to your stamina score. Oh, it's like you food. Okay, just food. You the chamber to continue west. I thought it was going to be skill The passage but soon leads to a junction. Just to heal. Where you notice more footprints on the floor. Possibly as many as three pairs heading north from the South Passage. You decide to follow them to where the passage opens out into a wide cavern, which is darker, but much drier. Ahead, you see the footprints gradually fade, then disappear. There is a large idol in the center of the cavern that must be six meters high. Okay. In its head, so we're back here again. eyes, each as big as your fist. On either side of the idol stand two giant stuffed bird-like creatures. Okay. Uh, Ra All right, Joe McCron, thank you for the 52 months. And I've done this, but I'll do it again for you. Feel brave tonight. How brave. Brave enough to do battle with hideous monsters, hmm? Brave enough to sneak around Death Trap Dungeon in the dark? And chance being the next victim of a dragon strike. <sighs> All right. Uh, who did I give the choice to? Guomi. What did you say, Guomi? Guomi. What do you want to do? 
We got rope. We do not got rope. I'll show you what we have. We have wood, a wooden tube and a goblet. No rope. We ignore the idol. Okay, walk through the cave to the tone, the opposite wall. Sounds good. Uh, let's see. You know, since you resubbed, you know what? I should do resubs. Uh, RH, uh, Omicron, Omicron, uh, Romnicron. You get the next choice. Not much farther down the tunnel, you come to a closed door on your left. Putting your ear to the door, you listen intently but hear nothing. Hmm. Omicron, what do we do? Walk north or open the door? I don't even know if you're still here. There you go. Open the door. Sounds good. Nova Odin, you got it. You got the next choice, Nova Odin. You enter a room which is small and completely empty. As soon as you are inside, the door slams shut behind you. Suddenly a voice booms out of nowhere, shouting, Welcome to Death Trap Dungeon. We've seen this before. The ingenious killer labyrinth of my master. Adventurer, I trust you will pay your respects to my master by shouting out his name. Okay, this is you, know, Odin. Succumbit is a worm. Hail Succumbit. Which one? Go fuck yourself. All right, he's a worm. He's a worm. I hate him. We hate him. All right. Uh, Freaky, go to JP's stream and clarify something about JP and Aaron. Well, if uh, have him, if he's even paying attention, you can... Have him message me in Slack if he has a question I need to clarify. I'm not going to go to his stream, though. All right. He's a worm! A worm. You take a deep breath and shout, Sukumvit is a worm. Once again, the mysterious voice calls out. Only this time, to your oh. great surprise. Hold on. JP and Aaron are talking about how you were the first person they told uh, they were dating. I don't know that. They could have told other people before me. That's nothing. Some, that's not something I can confirm. I can confirm that they told me, probably before a lot of people. They told me before it was public for sure. But if they said they told me first, then they told me first. I, I, I see no reason not to believe them. All right. In a far less threatening tone. Good. My master likes those who show spirit. Take this gift to help you. It will grant you one wish, but one wish only. Nova Odin, dude. Farewell. A gold ring magically appears out of nowhere and lands at your feet with a gentle tinkle. You pick it up and put it on one of your fingers. <gasps> the door opens and you step back into the tunnel to continue north. Ring of wishes! The tunnel twists and turns, but keeps steadily north. Ahead, oh, here, you see a thin shaft here of they are. light streaming down from the ceiling to the floor. I don't think I picked anybody it yet. It sparkles and shimmers, and you can see images of laughing faces in the light. All right. Let's see... Midnight guide? Hey, midnight guide. What do you want to do? Walk around the light or walk through the light? Midnight guide. Your choice. Uh, Zeke, you know this is the day of their wedding? Yeah, I know. I had it on my calendar. I was going to be down there for it. Walk around. Too creepy. Okay, we're walking around the light. Sounds good. Uh, next choice going to Phoenix 1228. Phoenix, you got the next one. You come to an arched doorway set in the right-hand wall of the tunnel. The heavy stone door is closed, but there is an iron latch and a round handle. Continue along the tunnel or try the door, Phoenix. Um, and the next choice will be Popsicle 31. 
Try the door. All right, Popsicle, you're next. Lifting the latch and pushing the heavy stone door open, you find yourself in a large cabin. The light is dim and murky, but as your eyes begin to adjust, you see that the walls are covered in green algae and running with moisture. The floor is strewn with straw. The atmosphere is warm, damp, and fetid and a soft humming sound fills the air. You step we know what this is. through the straw towards a corner of the cabin where there appears to be a shallow pit. Peering warily into the pit, you are disgusted to see a mass of pale, writhing worms, ah. some as much as half a meter long. Ah. Nauseated, you're about to turn away when you notice that their undulating bodies are swarming around a dagger. Its point held fast in a crack in the pit floor. The hilt is cased in black leather, so moist, studded with jealous. opals, and the blade is fashioned from a strange reddish-black burnished metal you have never seen before. You Oops. long to touch the dagger. I want it. But this would mean plunging your hand no. in among uh. the writhing worms. Oh, God, what do we do? All right, I don't know if you're here last time we, we encountered this popsicle, but make your choice. Back away in disgust or reach for the dagger. All you, popsicle. That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. Ah! Thank you. All right. Reach for the dagger it is. Next one is the Long Con. The Long Con. Thank you for the four years of support, Long Con. And you get to make the next choice. All right. Reaching for the dagger. Here we go. And Skirm. Holy shit. With 20 bucks, 17 cents. Spent most of the afternoon reminiscing, watching playthrough of the Crimson Court. Found the episode that spawned the rapturous Skirm, according to YouTube. It was back in 2017. It's been a blast, my friend. And here's to many more. Much love. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you, Skirm. Taking a deep breath, you lean over the pit and plunge your forearm into the mass of wriggling worms. Mm. They are cold and clammy and feel extremely nasty, but at least they are harmless and you are able to seize the dagger by the hilt. You give it a hard tug and it comes away from the crack in which the tip was embedded. Admiring its beauty, and wondering whether it might once have belonged to some luckless contestant. You give it a hard tug and it comes. Nice choice of words. You put the opal studded dagger firmly in your belt and leave the cabin. As you make your way back to the doorway, the buzzing sound increases in intensity and you look around desperately to discover where it's coming from. Glancing up in the nick of time, you see a huge and grotesque black shape of a giant fly emerging from a recess high up in the cavern wall. As it gets closer, you realize that it's at least one and a half meters long. Wow! Its opaque wings vibrate, making the sickening buzzing noise you can hear and its six black, hairy legs are poised to grasp your body. Below, its multifaceted eyes is a long, shiny black proboscis, which darts in and out venomously. You have stolen the giant fly's treasure from her brood of maggots, and you must face the consequences. This is the luck roll, I believe. It's time to test your luck yep. again. It's super fly. A roll equal to or less than your luck score means you've been lucky. But a roll higher than your luck could end. Luck score? Bad. 10. So we got to get equal to or lesser than 10. And we're good. The giant fly swoops down again to try to capture you. But this time you manage to evade its outstretched legs. Stepping back. You draw your sword to prepare to fight the hideous insect as Swing! it turns to attack you again. All right, here we go. All right. 
We're gonna get this fly. We're gonna hit him now. We're gonna hit him high, hit him hard. Oh, boom, bitch! How do you like that? You spin your sword Schwack. around your head, clipping the fly and removing part of one of his And if legs. I spend a luck point, I can hit him again for two more. As long as I get underneath. You there it is. Your luck. Yep. And your luck. But it cost me one luck point, so. Oh, baby! You hurl yourself at your enemy. Ah! Kiss, play, ah! and land a stunning blow. Hit him again! You grab two of the giant ply's legs, Die. but before you can do any damage, it wriggles free. Attack! Don't waste your luck. Well, I got two fortune potions. I think I'll be fine. Uh -oh. Again, it grabs you with oh! four of its legs, climbing Plans! quickly and dropping you to the floor, landing heavily. Attack! What are you doing, Snake Eyes? The fly charges at you. Wait a minute. Oh, that's But you're okay. able to duck out of the way. Do it! Come on! We can, we can do this! Just... There you go! The creature flies at you so close you can't use your weapons. Grabbing it by its legs, you swing around, slamming it into a wall. Pleased with your victory, you wipe the vile yellow slime from the blade of your sword. Oh, it is only doing two damage, and walk yeah. quickly to the door, back to the tunnel, and head north. I guess the dagger is just the for... The tunnel ends shortly at a junction. Selling or something? Looking left and right, you see a narrow passage disappearing into the dim distance. Yeah, I have no idea what this number means then. It's just how many weapons I have, because I, I obviously wasn't using, I wasn't doing any more damage. I was only doing two damage. It didn't up my, because my skill was, it's plus nine, it's nine plus 2d6 is my, is how I hit the thing. My damage is two, but I don't know. Like where that comes from at all. Um, did you ever decide if you're gonna play Final Fantasy X Remake? Oh, I know I'm gonna play it, Ghostwalkers. It's just gonna be not for a long time. So <laughs> don't uh, put it on your ca on your calendar or anything. All right, Long Con, are you here, Long Con? You had the you had the last resub that I had to get to. You want to choose to go east or west? Right here, we can go uh, west or east. Go east, please. Okay, sounds good. Zader. Zider, you get the next one. You get the next choice, Zider. East it is. Let's go. You walk down the passage and soon find yourself standing at the edge of a deep, dark pit. The passage continues east on the other side of the pit. You think you could probably jump over the pit, but you are not sure. There is a rope hanging down from the ceiling over the center of the pit. Okay. Zyder, Zyder, this is you, baby. Reach for the rope with your sword to enable you to swing across the pit. Jump over the pit carrying all your possessions or throw your shield over the pit and jump after it. I think I know what every choice of this does if they're the same every time. Uh, reach for the rope. Reach for the rope. Okie dokie. Ripping the rope. Vex firmly. cheese, you're next. Thank you for 32 you step months. Back to take a running jump. However, in the dim light, you do not notice that someone has cut the rope almost in two, just a little way above the section you are holding. As you swing out across the pit, it suddenly breaks, ah! and you scream with fear as you plunge headlong Fuck! to the depths below. Ah! You land heavily on your back. But luckily, your backpack cushions your fall, only costing you one skill point and two stamina points. It could have been much worse. The darkness is almost pitch black at the bottom of the pit, and you crawl along the floor, groping in front of you. Suddenly, your hand touches something cold, hard, and smooth. The object is small and round, but you cannot figure out what it is. 
You place it in your backpack, hoping to see what it is once you are out of the pit. Yeah, what is this? You continue to crawl forward and soon reach the pit wall. It's too smooth to climb, and you have to cut hand and toe holds in it with your sword. This takes a long time, but finally you climb out of the pit on the east side. You immediately check out the object in your backpack and discover that you have found an orb of blood red ruby. You are absolutely delighted and head off east in high spirits. <laughs> delighted. Whistling. Uh, ground control, I got, I don't worry about the health, I got it. The if, if I go below 10, I'll probably eat something. Left turn and continues north. Um, hold on. If I go below 10, I'll probably eat something, but there's stuff along the way that feeds you, so I'll just wait until it's more of an emergency to eat. Also, you can eat provisions during battle, and I don't think it takes up a turn. Pretty sure that's how it works. Is you can eat provisions, and then the then you can take a turn. I think that's how it works. Pretty sure. As far as you can see, you soon arrive at a closed wooden door in the left-hand wall. All right, this is you, Cheese. Cheese, Vex Cheese, what are we doing? Are we going north or are we opening the door? Oh, shit. Uh, door, I'm too curious. Okay, we didn't open this door last time, so this is gonna be, this is probably gonna be new. Uh, and then after that, we'll do, um, ghost, ghost walkers. You'll get the next choice, ghost walkers. The door opens into a large candlelit room filled with incredibly lifelike statues of knights and warriors. A white haired old man dressed in tattered rags jumps out from behind one of the statues and starts to giggle. Though he looks like a fool, the sparkle in his eyes make you think there is more to him. In a high-pitched voice, he says, Have you heard the good news? Jesus loves you! I have a pamphlet if you'd like to read about it! <laughs> Sorry. Oh, good. Another stone from my garden. I'm glad you have come to join your friends. Now, I'm a fair man, so I'll ask you a question. If you answer correctly, I'll let you go free. But if you answer is wrong, I'll turn you to stone. He starts to chuckle again, obviously pleased with your arrival. Mm. Father Ezekiel, do you dare compare this hermit to your most faithful? Not all that speak the good word are decrepit fools. <laughs> All right, Ghostwalkers, what do you want to do? Make a run for the door, attack him with your sword, or wait for his question? What do you think, Ghost? You must answer me these questions three. All right, wait for his question. Okay, that's what we'll do, and then we'll let uh, RG802. RG802, you can have the next one. The old man points at one of the statues, and you recognize it immediately. It is the knight who started the trial of champions. Oh. The agonized look on his face locked in stone for eternity. The old man smiles, saying, This man weighs 100 pounds plus half his weight. How much does he weigh? What will you answer? Oh, not this one. I, I'll answer this one. If it's a riddle, I'll answer. So he weighs 100 pounds plus Half his weight. Is that what he said? He said 100, 100 pounds plus half his weight. Okay, so if we're doing this, it'd be a hundred plus one half his weight equals his weight. Okay. So 
let's see, 200 plus X equals 2X. So if we minus an X from both sides, 200 equals X. His weight equals 200. Algebra, bitch. And X gonna give it to you. All right, uh, Limol. Oh, excuse me. No, we uh, RG. You got next, and then Limol's after that. Okay, here we go. Two hundred pounds. Still smiling, the old man looks at you and says, "Well done, stranger. You have answered correctly. I wish you good fortune during the rest of the trial of champions." Oh. And to this end. For those of you who are uh, missing out on simple, uh, the like beginner algebra, I'll type it out for you. So it is, one second here. No, I want notepad. There we go. Okay. So it goes like this. It was, he weighs, so X is his weight. So we did, because we don't know that, right? That's his weight. That's the very, or that's the unknown quantity. X, his weight equals 100 plus one half his weight, X. So in order, in order to solve for X, to get rid of the, uh, the fraction here, you multiply both sides by two. So then you will have two X equals 200 plus X because you times this quantity by two and this quantity by two. So there you go. So you got two X equals 200 plus X. So since they're on both sides of the equation, you can minus one X from both sides. So if I minus one X from both sides, two uh, X becomes just X again. And then that X becomes nothing. It becomes zero. So we can just leave that out. Done. Just like that. Just like that. Math! Matthew! Not Matthew. Not Matthew. How many Matthews are out there? There's a lot of Matthews. Okay. I so. shall increase your powers. He then mutters a few more unintelligible words. Skill points. You feel a powerful surge me, soar through your body. Give me fucking skill points. Increasing your skill, stamina, and luck by one. No! You bid the old man farewell and leave his room to continue north along the passage. Nice! Nice! Only a few meters further down the passage, you see another closed door in the left hand wall. The letter. X is scratched into its center panel. Putting your ear to the door, oh. you listen intently, but can hear nothing. Okay, so this is, we went in this room, that's where the old man had the riddle, so there was no exit, so we walked back out and, and we're back in this room again. Okay, uh, so RG802, this is your choice. However, we're gonna take a break. It's been two hours, so we're gonna get up, stand up, Stand up for our rights.